All right, first off, I feel media is a vessel of change and it has brought a lot of societal transformation. However, I feel that we have a lot of materials um, in the industry where everybody owns um, a camera phone and an Android phone. So indirectly makes them a reporter, so to speak. Indirectly makes them a journalist, in, in quotes, for those who um, actually didn't study um, the course. However, I also feel that when it comes to how um, media has evolved today, we all know that media is a powerful tool. Um, in as much as there are a lot of myopic, um, um, how will I put it, a myopic scope of reportage that uh, we have in the industry today. But many thanks to technology. Yes, when I started, um, when I started media at the time, you know, um, I read mass communication in, in Benedictine University, you know, and I did a lot of courses, international courses regarding um, uh, regarding media. But I've seen that today, not many people that we have in the industry today actually learned the course and for me while i understand that yes um uh, it's not necessarily that you have to read the course but sometimes if you find yourself in, the, in in a field where you feel that that's what put food on the table at least you should do one or two courses yes many thanks to technology again youtube has made things easier for everybody you can go on youtube and learn one or two things google one or two things and i know that also, YouTube have, have also um, touched a lot of artisans' lives, just like every other career-driven um, 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 people as well. But I feel with what you've asked me, I'm of the opinion that um, while we are thankful for media, especially social media to be precise, I feel that social media today have brought a lot of swift information you know well, once upon a time we rely on print once upon a time we rely on tv and radio but today i feel social media is now the new television social media is now the new you know um, um another form of you know transforming information but at the same time how are the reporters the journalists how quick are they uh, in terms of reporting all of this information without not verifying the news as the reason why we have a lot of fake news out, out there i'm of the opinion just like uh, quite a number of people might not agree with me i feel that there must be some sort of sensors that is guiding us on social media because ha uh, Sometimes you go on social media and it's very overwhelming, very depressing. And I feel that in this side of town, we actually don't pay attention to mental health. And that is where I'm of the opinion that we, I don't want to use the word genuine, but the, main, the real reporters, the main journalists, the main broadcasters have a lot of work to do in terms of reportage in terms of how um, you have to verify your news there is no investigative journalism that people do today people just want to jump on trend want to jump on um, sensational news just to drive traffic like you said to their pages and the reason why we are having some of the challenges we're having today we've seen the lack of minister of uh, of information Lai Mohammed, who is of the opinion that there must be some level of um uh, what's it called now level of um um, sensors, or uh, what was the word now, that must happen on social media. And I totally, totally, totally of that opinion that that should come to help the next generation that is coming after us. Fantastic. Um, Sometimes when I look back, I thank God that I actually, I, there was a reversion to media. I read, like I said earlier, I read mass communication in school. I did international relations in University of Sur uh, University of uh, Kingston University in Surrey. You know, I've done um, quite a number of courses in um, other universities as well, South Wales, and um, of course, Lagos Business School, and many others in terms of um, professional courses and all of that. But however, um, like I said earlier, I read mass communication in school, and my first major media um, encounter was with Silverbird at the time. That was almost two decades ago. That's 20 years ago. And I know that I started as, um, um, as an IT student from Silverbird. From there, I grew from one department to the other based on the value that you're adding to the table. That is what is missing today. And at some point, you know, there was career, you know, why are you still trying to find yourself, you know, and you want to do quite a number of things. You know, I, I worked with quite a number of organizations, different industry, banks, telecommunications, name it, you know, um, 
uh, financial organizations and all of that. But before then, I worked, that like I said, I worked with Silverbird. From Silverbird, I worked briefly with CVC. From CVC, I went to Nigerian Compass. From Nigerian Compass, AIT, and many other organizations. But, you know, for the quest of, I want to go into another um, I don't want to say second second stream of income, but really, I thought about it. I, people said, "Oh, open a boutique." People said, "Oh, do this." You know, you know, running Zedge, you know, was um, sometimes people don't understand the yeah, uh, the entry. Yeah, so the people do not understand the entrepreneurship level when it comes to running a business. Sometimes you could be facilitating quite a number of uh, trainings right now, and before you know it, you know, business might slow down, the likes and all of that. And I actually thought about it. What's that second thing that I know that when I wake up every day, I'll be happy that I'm going to work? Hence the reason why I thought deeply and I returned to media. And today, my version to media has been... Um, I would say it's God's blessings. What do I mean by that? You know, there are quite a number of people that I've met in the industry that have, like I can say, that have given me that support system that I need. In the industry where quite a number of people are not ready to pull your hands, in the, in the industry where everybody are always willing to be just about myself, you know, I'm grateful that I met quite a number of um, ones in the industry who were ready to support me, you know, because at the time when I was in the media, I was not, there was no social media. It was a different um, journalism, it was a different um, 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 media practitioner that people actually play, uh, was working at the time, you know. So, coming on social media, that was when I had to actually open an Instagram page and be present there. I struggled with it at the beginning, but today, if you go on my pages, guys, you will not believe that it's the same person that hopefully two and a half years ago that is actually, you know, I've embraced it totally and I, and it's because i know the influence of social media as well but you have to use the tool in a positive manner not in a negative manner that's the reason why i'm of the opinion that people must find their path in what they want to use the social media to do to drive um their businesses to another level um but um grateful to god that i have good support system i have good sponsors i'm sorry i don't know if i should mention nigerian breweries epis eco hotel um quite a number of organizations some are no longer supporting some are still supporting but i'm grateful that when it was time for me to uh, my reversion to media i had that great support system and quite a number of egg bones in the industry as well So I said that you facilitate trainings, you know, and uh, to bring in motivational speakers, and also there are some one-on-one -on -one trainings that organizations sometimes do not have enough money, basically, to try to bring um, a number of their staff together to say they want to train them at the time. Also, because I know that um, COVID has affected that business. However, ZEDG is a company where we facilitate trainings. You know, it's a chain of um, businesses, but mainly on trainings and also corporate gifts and all of that. For me, I, you see, um, may God continue to, uh, may, may I still continue to rest in peace. Um, Elijah was, I cannot tell my story today without um, not talking about the woman who raised me to be who I am today. No, you know, and um, more so, more importantly, my father. You know, however, my grandmother was a physical person on ground in terms of morals, you know, imbibing morals in terms of, you know, raising me in terms of the love and the care that a child needs. And um, but when it comes to all the finances, when it comes to all the luxury life that I lived, I say um, kudos to my father. You know, my father used to be one of the top executive in the um, banking industry at the time, uh, Eco International Bank, to be precise. That was the last bank. He, he worked before he stepped down and I can say that uh, without my grandmother today um, I don't know if all the morals all the values that grants me today that I've been able to actually you know transition to my children I don't think that um, I, will, I will be where I am knowing that we live in an industry today where morals have been swept under the carpet we live in an industry today where or the society rather where um, people have lost their conscience that's the word and we live in a society where um people also 
I have this mentality of I don't care. I don't know how we arrived at that, you know. And also, I'm sorry to use this word. We live in a society where, you know, sex has now become an handshake, you know, among ourselves, you know, among people, you know. And I'm glad that I was grounded growing up by a woman um, of great virtue, by an entrepreneur. And more importantly, I cannot also talk about it without also talking about the woman who birthed me. Without my biological mother, I might not be where I am today, regardless of the kind of relationship relationship we have but I understand that also she was trying to find herself just like I was trying to find myself at some point when I lost my grandmother but above all I say many thanks to my um, my late grandmother Elijah Abibat at Ondao and, and of course to my dad I say you've been awesome the best um, girl dad that anyone can wish for and till date he has always been my best friend always supporting me and of course i said yeah my mother supported in in, in our own best capacity uh, i like the fact that we lived together after uh, many years when i had my last child niniola and i think that brought a lot of closeness between us and above all i, I think I, I would not want to speak further than that I wouldn't say I was under pressure, but at the same time, I can understand when you're with your friends and you are the only one, so to speak, that is not yet married. You know, there's a part of it that when you want to contribute to conversation and they say, oh, yeah, you, are not, you don't even know your mind yet. Yes, um, my first um, marriage was, you know, uh, it was the first man who actually, um, I don't know if I should use the word right now, but the first man that I knew sexually, and I know that there was a lot of peer pressure in terms of, oh, wanting to fit in, in the midst of your girlfriends who are getting married. Uh, but if you ask me, at that age, was I too young? No. I feel it's about what actually happened is loving the wrong people. Not that you are the wrong person, but you are loving the wrong people. And it's based on the fact that uh, I cannot change the hands of time because I have beautiful children um, out of um, my past marriages. And I will say that all that has happened, I feel there are lessons that have defined me today. You see, when it comes to, um, first of all, I'm happy to tell my story. I own my story 100%. Um, and my, my story is a compilation of a reflection of my actions in the past, especially when it comes to me writing this book right now, Broken. Uh, what you've just asked me is actually in this book, Unbroken. And um, I would say that after writing this book, I understood that life is not black and white for the first time i'm the kind of person that sees life as black and white if you don't love me i cannot love you if you don't do this you know you have you know but after writing this book i had an understanding and a perception of life better what do i mean by that there are quite a number of things there's one particular thing i thought that i would never do in my life i don't know if i'm supposed to say this but you know that changed my perception and that made me understand that until you find yourself in certain situations don't be quick to judge you know even though you must be conscious of your actions because of your children however do i want to uh, try uh, that institution called marriage good the answer is yes but my understanding of marriage today has changed you know uh, i'm sorry to say this we live in a society where People think that a man is going to validate your existence. I'm sorry. I'm not of the opinion of that. I also even feel that right now, um, marriage scares me. But at the same time, I know it's a beautiful institution when you're with the right person. And uh, with all that have transpired in the past, for, for the first time, I think I want to own, I want to take ownership. What do I mean by that? What do I mean by that? I cannot keep pointing fingers at the, or the, at the other people without me not taking ownership. I think um, sometimes you think that you can change the people um, that you've met. Sometimes you, you, you will have high expectations about how our partners should behave. Sometimes we want our happiness to be validated by them you know but with all that i have experienced today i've been able to understand that all the others that i've been through psychologically morally physically um and even 
societal wise you know was something that was preparing me for today and i must tell you that i have no regrets when it comes to my past relationship i have no regrets when it comes to the children because we are my children are the biggest investment that i have today and i also see that um however we look at it there's a culture here in this part of our globe that we actually need to um unlearn and relearn what do i mean by that i feel that the society favors the men it is all right for a man to marry twice or once and have a failed marriage and without not being judged by the society but we live in a society today that when a woman faces such order in life she's being pulled down by fellow women to say oh she must have a character flaw she must there must be something wrong with her it must be that she's not satisfied it must be that especially when you're now a beautiful one like me oh yeah i'm beautiful yeah let me brag a little bit you know <laughs> you know and you they tend to want to judge you by your physical appearance it's unfortunate if i tell people that i can count how many times i've been to a club with one hand it's unfortunate if i tell people that i'm not a party person it's unfortunate when i tell people that you know i'm not somebody that you know i, I want to I I, I I i don't know how to explain this i'm not somebody that i want to wait on a man before i can achieve certain uh achieve certain things i just feel that um I, I'm, I'm sorry to say this i feel that we all need to evolve we all need to evolve when it comes to this marital issue we see what is happening across globe and today i'm grateful that i have the courage and that courage to walk away is always an issue i must say this even my so-called father or fathers you know like everybody knows i have two fathers um one is olatunde gani and of course i have my second dad who was also part of the people who raised me you know and um and supported me in everything that i've done today and that's dg taiwo lakano and um you know i cannot help but say thank you to them for prioritizing my mental health and my happiness i think that where we are today you know parents need to start understanding that whatever situation your parenting does not end when your children even gets married that is when your parenting starts that is when you need to look after your parents and after your children ask after them because we live in a society where even the children are also finding themselves there is no institution that is teaching people on marriages there is no institution that is teaching people on how to relate with one another when it comes to you human behavior and especially mental health sometimes we see different people coming from different backgrounds different values and coming together to form a family when there are parts when it comes to important issues in life in raising a child so i'm sorry today i must tell you guys you know i've I, like i've always been telling you at Razo, i'm in a place where i'm not sure if i really want the mono monogamy kind of marriage anymore yes and that is the reason why i said earlier that after writing my book i actually understood that you know life is not black and white you know even though this is my story i'm owning it this is my story this is my story but when i'm going to write another book i'm going to be coming from a different sector entirely my understanding of love has evolved my understanding of um, parenting have evolved and my understanding of having a partner somebody who can support you career wise you know i'm sorry to say that we only have few men can i say that yes i have an irritate in my world right now where I, where I can say that yes he's a good man and the likes and all of that but i'm not so so sure if i will not be lying to my audience that marriage still scares me that marital institution still scares me but because i've been there twice but you know um and I have no regret about it, but I just want um, oh, I just want people to understand that our culture has placed a lot of importance when it comes to uh, uh, you know protect, protecting the interest of the men instead of protecting the interest of the women instead of understanding that as a society who owns the society the women owns it who bets the men the women bets the men and that is where i feel that we all need to evolve and also the men as well regardless of how much we want to keep um, raising lending our voices regarding supporting uh, women supporting each other i feel that there are a lot of reorientation that needs to come with the men understanding that the world that we live today and the, the way the women the, the women of today think is actually different from when our grandparents our mothers think and they are 
their threshold of holding pain. I think that's also another thing. That's the reason why you see that divorce is very rampant today. But guys, um, all I'm going to say is that um, love is a beautiful thing. Marriage is a beautiful thing. When you're with the right person and understanding yourself first, I feel that women of today do not even understand themselves. Or you need to find yourself first before you actually take that step. That's the reason why I'm in a place where I can say that, okay, I have redefined what partnership and marriage means. All right, many thanks for asking the question. And again, let me start by saying that I'm happy to tell my story and I will own my story any which way. Um, like I said earlier, is a compilation and a reflection of my actions in the past and this beautiful book that I'm holding right now um, is an you know, is an understanding and the perception of how life have evolved how I have grown I'm more invo I'm more informed you know and in one of the chapters here you know I and I'm, I'm glad that you spoke about my last marriage because I actually feel that my ask my last marriage sh could have broken me yeah and that's the truth and the reason why I'm saying that I could have broken me is because you know woman meets a uh, man man meets woman you both share your challenges in the past you would not expect that the same person who you've once spoken to about your past about your story will actually now come back and actually do worse to you so i feel i i, I look at that and i feel like how wicked can we be as human beings and i feel that at the end of the day you know like i said earlier i really understood that life is not black and white as people think because i also have learned a lot after writing this book and just like i um, you said earlier by asking me you know how women break other people's home you know i'm sorry to say this i don't want to sound like an hypocrite because of what i said earlier that i said i don't mind being the tenth wife of any man today and the reason is that if you actually pay attention to that line you will realize that this is a woman who is scared of love this is a woman that is scared to actually you know give herself again and be broken this is a woman who is trying to guard her emotional um, stability hence the reason why i said that but again i must put a clause to this if you must as a woman decide to say that you want to settle as a tent wife so to speak you must make sure that the other woman is aware of you you must make sure you protect your unborn children. You must make sure that you find yourself in a place where you can have a mixed family peacefully, regardless of how whatever life chooses you. Because um, I'm sorry, I'm a Yoruba woman, um, even though I have Delta blood in me and all of that, you know, no matter the kind of home you want to enter, uh, no woman wants to share their man. No woman who genuinely loves the man who is loyal to the man, you know, would love to share a man. But um, we found ourselves in funny circumstances in life. For the record, this, for, for the record, this my story was largely about my failed marriages, human behaviors, when it comes to friends, when it comes to associates, when, you, when you're in a place of power, when it comes to my foundation, more importantly, the series of trials that I went through in my last marriage, in my last marriage. Uh, it, it was based on infidelity, it was based on violence, physical violence, uh, um, mental violence, you know, and, you know, I'm, I'm not in that place anymore, and I really don't want to really put energy in it, and the reason being that, if you ask me today, do I feel what I feel um, many years ago? The answer is no, because I do not live in the same house anymore. I live in a different house now. I live in another world now. So that remains in my past. From the projection of this book, my book, Unbroken, and truly I'm unbroken, women need to understand that regardless of what life throws at you, you know, you must own up to your journey. You must take on your journey and take ownership on where you think that you also goofed because no matter what, there will be some or two, one or two things that I've been able to sit back today and reflect on. And what do I mean by that? So women need to understand their sanity, their well-being, and of course the growth, um, the growth that you bring into a relationship to matters. What you bring to the table also matters. I feel that we are in a society where um, the women wait on the men. No. 
both parties need to come together to contribute to the home front. I don't think that men need to be put under such pressure. And the reason why sometimes I feel that some of the challenges we are facing, we are facing. Some people might talk, if, uh, what might say, oh, why is she talking from that angle? I feel that we have a lot of lazy women today. Please, no offense to women. So just like I said earlier, that I ask myself, what role um, does a man want to come and play in my life today that I'm not playing? It is because I feel that um, I'm more empowered, you know, financially, mentally, morally, and physically in terms of your spirituality. So, uh, and I feel that women need to quickly grow up on that. We have a lot of slave queens on social media today that I feel that, you know, they put in the little work and they want to show the luxury lifestyle that is actually causing a lot of confusion for the next generation. So, um, to end this conversation, I feel that women today need to, you know, prioritize what is more important in terms of finding yourself and understanding that slow and steady wins the consistency. You do not have to wear that bone straight air now. Because um, if you ask me, apart from the fact that, you know, I come from a background where I'm being supported by my biological father and of course my second father as well when it comes to my career and the likes and all of that, I feel there's another thing for you to be supported by your parents, but it's another thing for you to be willing to want to put in the work and that is where growth and maturity and knowing yourself as a person as a woman comes in you know i i feel that you are taking me back to my past yes, okay. and i'm actually yeah. trying to avoid you know going back to it because in my head i no longer live there but do I understand um, the importance of sharing your story so you can help another fellow woman? I understand that. And I feel that on that note, I want women to understand that I cannot help but keep saying empower yourself. Uh, reason being that sometimes I think that empowerment brings some, a little bit of respect from the other party. When you are in a place where you rely on a man 100%, that you've put yourself in a vulnerable state where anything can be thrown at you and you have no other option but to embrace it. However, you know, regardless of whatever the society is, I feel that the society today, um, you know, there's a, there's a culture where our parents, our grandparents have been, without them not knowing that subconsciously, they've pushed down that thought of a woman must embrace everything that must be thrown at you to show that you are a loyal woman, you are a strong woman. Um, there's nothing wrong in you saying that I'm no longer strong. There's nothing wrong in you working out. I, and we've seen quite a number of uh, instances. Look at Osinachi's story today. She is a woman who is empowered. This is a woman um, who is working 24-7. Working but this is a partner who is the manager. Again, we must, women must also, not just women, a couples must learn to separate a business life and their married at home. I feel that that is also some of the challenges that we are facing today. And the reason why you see that quite a number of things that is happening is unbelievable. A, I am using this opportunity, this medium, media room up, to speak to women who are listening to me, who are watching me, that staying alive is more important than being a missus. Staying alive and having a career, even with the fact that the media the social media has helped um, a, lot of, a lot of the women in running online businesses today. You don't actually even need to leave your, the comfort of your, of, of your home before you can end something. I know quite a number of times that uh, my PA being you know, orders a lot of things from social media, and I know how much goes into the business. You know, so in, a, in a month we are calculating a million plus from people we do not know from people that we are using to empower their businesses and this is why i say that um anything that affects you mentally that affects your peace it's time for you to shut that book i already spoke about um running um my corporate organization, that's ZEDGE Limited, and we facilitate trainings, we do a lot of corporate gifts as well, and um, we bring in motivational speakers. Uh, yes, COVID has affected how 
many organizations tend to want to do physical training now. There are a lot of um, things that is ongoing at the moment in terms of, you know, web now, calling it different names and the likes and all of that. But many thanks to COVID and, of course, we are all learning along the way. However, uh, before COVID, you know, I actually I did my, my, my reversion to media and I, start, I wanted to start from TV and I faced a lot of challenges at the time. And my girlfriend, Bimbola, actually said to me, Kike, why don't you start from radio? Radio for me was new. You know, I felt I don't know anything about radio. You have a lot of convincing to do on radio because people are listening to your voice. And sometimes you have to, not sometimes, most times you have to sound based on the story at hand so that you can carry your listeners along. I felt that that was too much for me to do. But mm, I like challenges and I went on it and... Um, Today, the rest is history. Um, I'm happy for the training radio I've given me today. I'm happy for the fact that even when I started, quite a number of people could see um, through, my, through my passion, you know, knowing that I was in the media space before um, two decades ago. And coming back, you know, not even having social media uh, presence and the likes was a new thing for me. Again, I thank Azu, Azuka, uh, Azubike in Inspiration FM. We insisted that I must open a social media page for Real Talk with Kika. I felt that I could be running all the information from Inspiration FM page. I don't want to do that and the like. But, hey, um, I'm happy for the support system, like I said earlier. And um, now my transition to TV you know, finally happened after a year on radio and my sponsors could also see the value. The value that you bring on the table determines the next food that you're going to put on your table, yes. And that was how everybody came around and said, maybe it's time, maybe it's time, maybe it's this. Even there, there was a part of me that still felt, am I really sure I want to do this in as much that I've been wanting to return to TV, I've been wanting to, do, you know, and when it eventually came calling, I wasn't also so sure. So quite a number of people actually think, oh, I'm so confident in a lot of things that I do. Guys, I doubt myself sometimes, yes. And there's a lot of work that goes into it. Till date, I do not have a producer. I have once had a producer um, once. I think there was um, a dollar for fantastic woman being, you know, uh, who came in and worked closely with me for two months. And uh, she, she contributed a good cut into the thing. And of course, you know, I had one other person who so worked for one month. But I must tell you that it's not easy being the producer of your show. It's not easy being um, the content um, researcher, developer. Again, I have um, uh, my cousin who also works closely with me, Bola Joluti, who also helps when it comes to content development, you know, okay, let's do this, let's do research like this and all of that. And of course, you know, my transitioning to TV, you know, I've met fantastic women, but yeah, quite a number of my sponsors so did not understand why do you have to bring in people? And I felt that this was the message from God that I needed to do to pull other people's hands, you know, and even though it was eating into my profits, not that they increased my budget or anything but i knew that it was time for you to put smiles on other people's faces and also you know grow together as you all forge ahead in life and also in career and i've met fantastic human beings you know i've met um quite a number of them that today when i sit down and think back i say thank god that i made the decision i have dami lola i have lolo um some of them no longer works with us i have marshall i have fo and i'm also like the proverb says 20 children cannot play for 20 years and that's exactly what is going on as you forge ahead you know there will be new faces there'll be new people that you will be meeting there'll be people who all evolved you know my prayer to today is that or uh, is that all of them at some point get to their own final destination of being a ceo and owning their individual thing but for now we still continue to hold each other's hand, and i say thank god for that I just want to say this, that everything that I've written about this book right here is me owning my worth of honor and my respect through the month, 
through all the challenges that I've faced, nothing in this book was exaggerated. I have received of all that I've spoken about. I have received of even violences that I really do not want to put in this book because of my children. Sometimes you have to protect the future of your children and not having a myopic um, lenses right now because of you telling your stories, you know. And I want women to understand that regardless of what life throws at you, you have to keep picking yourself up. Regardless of what life throws at you, you have to understand that you own your life. Regardless of what life throws at you, you have to understand that as a woman, um, the society has made us understand that um, we need a man. Of course, we need a man. We need a good man who are very supportive. We need a man who are well raised by their parents. We need a man who understand that holding another woman being which is a woman who is the weakest vessel will not take anything away from them. Yes, at some point, you know, in that relationship, and Tazi just wants to keep taking me back. See of media room up. Hmm. All right. All I'm going to say is that um, at some point I almost ended my life. But I may not be with the people that surrounded me at the time. But I must tell you that I had great support system. I had women, you know, who I never thought would lend their voices, who I never thought would give me that support. I have parents who supported me regardless of what society would say. Even though, you know, one of them felt that, okay, so, so that what would the world say, what would people say, just hold on there, maybe it will change, maybe this, maybe that. But I must tell you guys, my last marriage actually, um, almost ended my life you know sitting down today reflecting on it even though i'm trying not to go back to that same place that i used to be i'm grateful to god and i'm grateful for the fact that i have the courage to walk away and to protect the sanity of my children and i that must be a man poor i love a man poor uh, if I'm obsessed with her, it's so bad, you know, but uh, first of my first role model is my grandmother, Elijah Abibat Atondao. This is a woman who have raised me uh, to be who I am today. So I'm a believer of the fact that your role model must come from your own front. Your own role model must come from your foundation because we see quite a number of people on the streets. We see them with uh, lofty... Um, resume but in terms of character you do not know these people behind closed doors so i'm of the opinion that your role model must start from your home must start from your foundation and that is the reason why i'm giving the credit to uh, my late grandmother halaja bibata tundao and the second person for me is amampo gosh i'm so obsessed with that woman when it comes to her achievements in her career i'm obsessed with the fact that she's also able to you know owns everything that I've been shown to her. Everybody have challenges, even from her own front, from her marriage and the likes and all of that. But she has been able to hold on to that relevance in the media industry. Again, who is that another person that I might say that I actually admire again? So that the men don't feel that they are left out in all of this. I will say that. Let me, let me take it back to um, Nigeria. Um, I will say that um, I like entrepreneurial men. I like business, um, I like career-driven men, and um, I really don't want to mention, <laughs> I don't know what to mention names right now. If it's from the media, if it's from the media, of course, there are tons of people from the media who are men that I adore. I have um, um, Dele Muamodo, I have... Um, Ruben Abati, we have quite a number of men in the industry. Um, um, who else again? Yeah, those two, those those, yeah, those two. Actually, I have a good relationship with them. But there are men that I admire their work ethics and actually the, the work that they put into um, the media industry and the impact, more importantly. Uh, when it comes to the corporate world, there's one person I think that I adore, which is Tony Lumelu. Yeah. I love the fact that when it comes to CSR, is one person who understands it better. When it comes through his foundation, also when it comes to you know the banking industry, that is one person that I can tell you that I also admire, Tony Lumelu. <laughs>